What do kids and beans have in common? They love to climb. Today we are building a bean teepee for beans to climb up. It'll be strong enough the kids can climb it a little, but mostly they'll hide inside. Let's go. Step one is to gather your materials. We've got beans to plant. We've got some tall bamboo. We've got a wheelbarrow of compost for amending the soil. We've got shovels and rakes and digging forks for digging, a ladder in case we need it when we're putting it all together. And then we've got center stake there, the long stake, we'll hammer that in the ground, some smaller stakes and the hose for marking our circle. And then we've got twine for putting it all together and a tape measure. Step two is to choose your site and find the center. You're gonna do any prep work you need to at this point. So mow the lawn if you need to, or move sticks out of the way. We have done the mowing, so we're just gonna mark the center spot now. Step three is to lay out your circle. We're gonna use some smaller stakes and a hose to kind of guide us so we have a really good visual of where we are gonna need to dig in step four. Stand back when somebody else is using a tool. As part of step three, go ahead and choose which direction your door is going to be. We're going to put ours on the north east side. Uh, it'll be a nice kind of hidden door, and then also that's the where the one of the places that will get less sun, so it should work out well. For step four, you're going to need a shovel. We are going to prepare the soil about 12 inches wide in the horseshoe around our circle. So we don't need to dig where the door is gonna be, but everywhere else along this circle, we're gonna dig about 12 inches wide, pull the grass off and we'll put it to the side. It'll go into a compost pile. And then we will add about an inch of compost because it's pretty good soil here. So as you, if you're taking outside, you can kind of cut along the outside and then you can come back at the inside. I'm going to start the shovel for you. Okay. Come here. And then that's going to make it easier to lift that sod out in chunks if you wanted to move it somewhere else. Or in our case, we'll kind of clump it down on the ground to get the dirt off and then move it into the wheelbarrow. Or maybe just put a know your soil needs certain amendments from your own experience and from soil testing you could add those in this step as well so for example our soil is acidic and so I'm going to add a little bit of garden lime which is The method that I'm using to dig is called double digging. It comes from John Devens, who is Grow Bio Intensive. And so let me show you how it works in case you want to do this. It's a good digging technique to use, to use if you have any kind of um, hard pan in your soil that you need to break through, or if you have really heavy clay soil, which this soil is pretty heavy clay, so it's nutrient rich, but it doesn't drain super well. So, so first you're going to need an open trench. So the first round you just put this soil to the side or in a bucket and then you're going to move this soil over. You're just going to basically like slide it over. It's okay if it gets mixed a little. You kind of want to just slide it over. So now I've got a new trench. So now I'm going to use my digging fork and at the bottom I'm just going to push it in and loosen it. 
And if you're like being, um, if you're like really doing this, you really make sure to get down a full two feet. In this case, I'm just gonna do my best here. So I'm gonna dig another trench. Break up any clods. And then I'll do some more forking. And really when digging, you probably should not wear Tevas. <laughs> you should wear some good heavy boots to protect your feet. That's true. Okay, that's probably enough video. You can probably help me now. We are back with step number five. We are gonna tie together our first three poles and raise them. So we learned the other night three key things. Number one, make sure the, that your first three poles, your tripod, are set up in a triangle. I had our triangle a little bit off and this happened. Oh! Very important to have those bottoms be steady. So then number two is you are gonna wanna have at least two adults for this step. So if your partner is available, um, uh, maybe a friend or a neighbor can come help. And then number three, you do wanna make sure that the kids aren't uh, under the tripod until it is stable and secure. So our two older guys are inside watching one of their favorite shows, The Wild Kratts, and their little guy is gonna ride in the backpack while we do this. So set two poles side by side parallel and put a, the third pole at an angle, about 30 degrees from the top. You're gonna want to measure from the bottom of each pole, however tall you want your TP to be and make marks. And so all three marks are gonna come together right here. So bring the rope and give yourself two arm lengths, a wingspan, it's about six feet, of a tail. Then you're going to tie a clove hitch. Come over with the tail to your left. Bring the rope underneath and cross over the top. So you have an X at the top. Then you're gonna come around all three poles again. And this time you're gonna go under that top rope and pull it tight. And this is a clove pitch, it's a self-tightening knot. Okay, now you're gonna take that tail and wrap it around the pole, follow the direction going that down. your rope is already going, so going down. You're gonna wrap it around how many times, Colby? Three. Three times and tighten it each time. And on the third time, you're going to wrap around the top pole and tie another clove hitch. Okay, then we're ready to raise it. And you can walk it up. And then carefully spread out the poles. Into your tripod. And so you can see here, this is our door pole. So here's our door space and the door pole is to the left of it. And then the other poles are arranged so that it's a really nice tripod. Then you're gonna add the rest of your poles, which is gonna be step six. In our case, we are gonna add the other nine poles. These poles are numbered one through nine originally. So one, two, and three go to the right of our door. Number one is your right door pole and it gets dropped into the opening. And then number two will actually stack right on top of it. So it's gonna come around there and stack on top. And as Colby puts these in, he's pressing them into the ground a little just to make them really solid. 
And we're, we're eyeballing this. It doesn't have to be exact. And number three, you're gonna try to slide into that same spot and have it stack on top as well. Very nice. So poles four, five, and six continue on around the left side if you're facing the front of your teepee. And they are gonna slide into that same crotch very carefully so you don't knock them all out. And this design is based on the teepee designs from Nomadic Teepee. And the last one just barely fits in there. It's kind of hard to see in the with the trees behind, but let's see if I can take it on this side to see. Okay, then the last three poles are going to fit on the back side. And when we get back here, we'll see there is a really nice space for poles 7, 8, and 9. And they'll just fit right into there. Here comes number nine for us, sliding right into that slot. And now there's a really nice bundle up there that we are going to wrap the rope around. That brings us to step seven. Wrap the rope around the teepee. You are going to go counterclockwise. So as you go around, you're going to kind of whip and pop the rope just to kind of knock it up towards the top. Gently, you don't want to knock everything down, but you're just trying to get a nice snug fit and the rope will snug up against itself. Here. Right there. Why does it not fall? Why? It will fall. It very hard. Uh -uh. It won't fall even if you bang it, I don't think. I mean, don't do crazy banging on it. Can we do this? Mm, that might break the, the bamboo. Don't knock it down. That seems pretty solid. Okay, that's enough testing of it. Thank you. Step eight is to add some smaller twine for the beans to grow up. This is a biodegradable natural fiber. That way it's not too much trouble to, to clean up. And I'm going to use two half hitches. You could use your clove hitch again here. Um, and then... Well, why are you tying it right there? This is going to be so that the, the beans can get a start. Um, so, you want to help? So you want to be probably about six inches off the ground, roughly. And then I'm just going to come around here and I'm going to go around it. And I'm going to just let friction hold it on there. When you get to the door, don't forget and keep going because you want to leave the door open. So we're going to wrap around. No, don't. <laughs> it would be kind of hard to get in and this time I am gonna tie a knot here then you're gonna come so you're gonna come up and then loop through so that you've got this one is being held up by this one there's it's creating this tension and then you're gonna loop backwards through there wrap it around a couple times and then friction's gonna hold it in place as long as you keep it taut and then you're ready to keep going again Now we're ready for step nine, planting your seeds. We like to have a diversity of plants in most of our growing areas, and so our bean teepee is no different. So let me tell you what we're gonna put in ours. We've got these gorgeous scarlet runner beans. They're a shelling bean. They have beautiful red flowers that hummingbirds love, and look how gorgeous those little beans are. Then we're also gonna try some Kentucky pole beans. Around the edges, I've got some sunflowers and some radishes we're gonna plant. I've got nasturtiums and Malabar spinach, which is a, um, not actually a spinach, but it's a vining leafy plant that works for spinach in the summertime. What else could you grow on your bean teepee? You could do peas if it's early in the season or if it's fall. You could use it to support your cucumbers. You could potentially grow tomatoes up it, but it would take a little bit more work to keep those tomatoes on there. Anything that vines could be part of your bean teepee. Now, we did let the boys start on this a little bit earlier before I finished the trellis <laughs> because they were getting impatient and they were ready to plant. Okay, come plant a
Push them in, two knuckles deep. Push them in with your finger. Whichever seeds you choose for your teepee, let the seed packets be your guide in deciding when to plant your seeds and then how close to plant them and how deep to plant them. Give everything a good drink of water. And now you wait. We'll be back with an update on our bean TP later this season and we'll add some photos to the blog and to Facebook. So be sure to follow us here on Facebook, Gardens That Matter. Come on over and join our email list for more gardening tips, tutorials, and workshops. Thank you so much for joining me and until next time, happy gardening.